This episode brought to you by Skillshare. Classes taught by expert practitioners for your career or for your passions. The first 500 people who sign up receive a free two-month trial. Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. My god, that was amazing. Even better than I remember it. I spared no expense. Apologies, but John Hammond is here to convince us why there should be another Jurassic Park sequel. He just got done showing us the first one, I guess. Just as spectacular as when I first saw it. Even after all these years, my god, how did you do it? I'll show you. Now this is a Jurassic Park movie. Hello, I am a Jurassic Park movie. But if we were to take just one drop of the movie's genius... John, that hurt. Relax, John. It's all part of the miracle of lazy cloning. Hello, I'm a Jurassic Park movie. Hello, Jurassic Park movie. Hello, I'm another Jurassic Park movie. Hello, Jurassic Park movie. By creating the same thing over and over with a drop of the original genius, we can have as many Jurassic Parks as we want. Remarkable. Remarkably remarkable. The lack of humility before great filmmaking that's being displayed here staggers me. Oh, like, no. Yeah, I just want to relive my nostalgia without questioning why I'm a social media addict who doesn't like change. Now, 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 let him talk. I want to hear everybody's viewpoint before I automatically disagree with it. I mean, don't you see the danger in what you're doing here? Jurassic Park is one of the coolest, most groundbreaking movies ever made, and you wield it like an Alien vs. Predator sequel. I don't think you're giving our sequels enough credit. Haven't you noticed each sequel is getting dumber with every clone? Duh, I'm Jurassic Park 3. I put numbers in the titles now. Duh, I'm Jurassic Wild. Somehow not saying Park makes me a reboot. It's like the Michael Keaton movie from the 90s no one remembers. The paper? No. Speechless? No. My Life? No. Desperate Measures? No. Jack Frost? No. Much Ado About Nothing? No. No. One Good Cop? No. Pacific Heights? No. Multiplicity? That's the one. Oh, come on. Each sequel has a ton of great scenes. Two. Huh? Two great scenes. That's what our scientists figured out. You only need two great scenes to keep people coming back. Lost World had the glass breaking and the T-Rex running in the city. Three had the pterodactyls and the T-Rex fight. And World had the opening and ooh, that ending with the T-Rex. Ooh, mommy, look at the T-Rex and then she's running around in her high heels and then Blue comes out of nowhere and before you know it, the Meg jumps out of the water and then chomp and everybody's applauding going, goodness gracious me. So by having only two good moments, we could have the same idiot characters doing the same idiot things and nobody cares. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you patented it and packaged it and slapped down the plastic lunchbox and now you're selling it, you're selling it. Well, does anyone else feel weird that he's getting the Ian Malcolm dialogue? Cause my name is literally Malcolm. How long is it gonna take before doing the exact same thing over and over doesn't lead to two great scenes anymore? Um, I hate to interrupt, but what are your sequels doing? Oh. Feeding Grant? Grant! No, 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 no! You cannot feed that much! I knew it. They're devouring the original, so now there's nothing original left. It's like that terrible 90s movie with the awful CGI. Deep Rising? No. The Relic? No. Lost in Space? I don't understand! These shitty sequels still make money! Yeah, but you got so occupied thinking if you could, you never bothered to think if you should. Again. Literally Malcolm. I just don't know how this is possible. Well, this is just like what happened with today's movie, Jurassic Park well, Fallen Kingdom. Well, obviously, we all knew you were making that comparison. Well, do you know why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Yes. Will you tell us? No. Aww. It may have made a lot of money, but Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom has left a lot of viewers asking, what the heaping pile of dinosaur shit were they thinking? Not only does it have little to nothing new in it, but the idiotic decisions made in this movie are so massive and so mind-blowing that you feel like that one pilot in Return of the Jedi. There's too many of them. 
Along with false advertising, making it look like the film was about the dinosaurs being released on the public when it's really just the last few minutes. This duped audiences, pissed off critics, and yet still made a bundle at the box office because dinosaurs are like dangling keys to us. Just keep waving them in front of our faces and we'll keep forgetting what a lazy, repetitive form of entertainment they are. So as long as there's still people optimistic enough to have hope for these movies... Oh god, did those sequels just belch up a hungover Jeff Goldblum? Spent no expense. We'll always be here to review it. Let's take a look at Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The film opens up with an inspiring idea that no Jurassic Park film has ever tackled before. Nah, just kidding. It opens with dinosaurs attacking people like always. These guys are sneaking into the now-closed park due to reconstruction and peeling tourists out of teeth, as they know this is a dangerous and illegal mission, so they smartly bring no weapons at all. What? What is going on? What does this mean? Is this a gang sign? Are you in a gang? Don't join a gang! Hey look, the T-Rex. Oh. Yeah, it's not even really a big deal anymore. In the first one, she almost outruns a jeep. In the second one, she can't catch up to a crowd of people. In this one, she can't catch up with Homer Simpson's voice actor. I'm a mother fa- eh, who cares? Okay. Never laugh in a survival film unless you want your obvious death to be accompanied by Ooh, choir music! Shit's getting real in this Jurassic Park! Yeah, we need epic Latin gibberish to frame the gigantic size of Jeff Goldblum's ego! I think we should allow our glorious dinosaurs to be taken out by the volcano. As a dinosaur myself, I wish to be put out of my misery. It looks like a volcano is about to take out the island of dinosaurs, and the debate rages whether or not it's ethical to save them or let them die. As well as the debate of, did Jeff Goldblum just read the script and only now while saying the lines realize how stupid it is? I'm talking about man-made cataclysmic change. What kind of change? Change is like death. Is that really what I'm saying? I I'm a scientist and that's why I'm saying, okay, whatever, death. Meanwhile, we cut to the real heroes of this movie, hipsters. Oh, you think I'm joking? They have a whole office of SJWs researching what to be offended by next. And good news, you have the whole movie with them. As the original owner of the park, Claire, played again by Bryce Dallas Howard, leads a group of Chevy Millennial ads to lobby for the safety of the dinosaurs. But they get some bad news. The committee has resolved not to recommend any legislative action regarding the de-extinct creatures on Isla Nublar. They said this was literally done just to shut Jeff Goldblum up. So as you can imagine, this is a real big blow to Claire. Or the music indicates things are good! Who said this movie was tone deaf? She's brought to John Hammond number two, that's honestly what he is. Didn't you know? John Hammond had a super close business partner he never talked about in any of the other movies. And if for some reason you're confused as shit by that, don't worry, this incredibly forced exposition, oh, I mean totally natural human talk, will clear things up. We actually met once seven, eight years ago, and you don't remember. Hammond and Lockwood built a custom lab in the sub-basement. Haven't you run his foundation since? Since college, yeah. Extracted the first DNA from Amber right beneath our feet. He wanted someone young and uh, idealistic to spend his fortune. John Alfred Hammond, father of Jurassic Park. But of course you knew that. Oh my god, did you really just spell out who John Hammond is? Like, the audience is that stupid? John Alfred Hammond, but of course you knew that. This is a dinosaur, but you already knew that. These are teeth, but you already knew that. This is paper! Paper! We're just talking how people normally talk. Paper! This is how we normally talk. Hammond's partner is Ben Lockwood, played by James Crumwell. By God, Bay Pig in the city wasn't kind to him. John said it best. These creatures don't need our protection. They need our absence. That's why we're flying in to anal fist nature once more. Yep, he wants to save them and bring them to a new island to live in peace. Because all the other times we ever interfere with these bitches, it always turned out great. There was a tracking system in place at your park. Radio frequency ID chips in each dinosaur. I remember. I know. We're establishing how bad the writing is. There is one that poses a real challenge for us. Blue is potentially the second most intelligent piece of life on this planet. We honestly should have let her write the screenplay. Of course, there's only one person who can connect with Blue, and that's her trainer, Owen. Played again by Chris Pratt. I was Groot. Well, it shouldn't be too tricky to get him on board, seeing how those two were an item from the last movie. <laughs> I can't believe you think that you left me! 
me. Oh, we're Ghostbusters 2-ing this. You know that dumb shit where they break up a couple for absolutely no reason except to get them back again in the sequel? Cause new ideas are for people who want to think? Well, if there's anything Twister has taught us, it's that a divorced couple that constantly acts like a divorced couple should clearly be together. I left you. You are so stubborn. Well, look at you now, you're saving the world. Yeah, that's the line that deserved the super over-the-top laugh. Look at you now, you're saving the world. <laughs> Blue is alive. You're just gonna let her die? Well, yeah. I got a band I'm starting anyway called Mouse Rat. I really think it's gonna take off. Meanwhile, the countryside's so cliché, they actually put in a shooting star. Make a wish! Maybe they'll clone Samuel L. Jackson! We see where the real romance in this movie lies. <laughs> hey, I'm okay. Hmm, Mr. Owen Blue. Guess it does have a nice ring to it. So he surprises her on the plane, heading towards the island. Franklin, wiener. I didn't think you were gonna ever show up. Well, I have to change a million things to account for another person, supplies, rations, and so forth, but thanks for surprising me, asshole. Don't worry, though. Our duo of self-righteous Lisa Simpsons will bring the laughs. More likely to die riding on a horse than in a plane. No, I'm not, because I won't get on a horse. My chances are zero. This is just like when we got in the argument of whose screenplay represented the evils of capitalism better. Meanwhile, back at Lockwood's house. Oh, yeah, I'm really scared something's gonna happen and it's not just a fake out. I don't know, I think one of those statues are gonna move. <laughs> <laughs> this is Maisie, Lockwood's granddaughter he cares for after his daughter died in a car crash. I don't wanna buy. Queen's English girl. Bath. 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 So you're not a wild animal. <laughs> it doesn't matter how charming an actress you are, honey. You will be the worst part of this movie. You have your mother's wicked sense of humor. Do I look like her? Oh, yes. Well, we took enough notes to make sure. I mean, now what's strong genes? <laughs> We're not playing this goddamn music again. Here's some bug spray. Bug spray. Oh, 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 those guys are gonna want bug spray! <laughs> you just don't get it. The T-Rex would be dead by now, right? Oh, <laughs> he's afraid of the T-Rex. Did you get that? Did you get that he's afraid of the T-Rex? We know we have to spell out a lot for you, so here it is again. So she'd be dead by now, right? How frightfully witty. <laughs> they come across their first whimsically beautiful dinosaur moment. I'm just gonna guess and say Brontosaurus because that's always the one they make whimsically beautiful. Is it weird that your dinosaur movies show very few kinds of dinosaurs? When get a load of this, that's the first dinosaur the dinosaur medic has ever seen. Look at that. Never thought I'd see one in real life. That's like a veterinarian never seeing an animal. Why did you bring her? You have a shit ton of money! Were there no other dinosaur medics when this park was open? Or did they just not have the badass woke blogger spunk that she has? Miss, things could get hairy out there. These are powerful sedatives, one too many, and she could have respiratory failure. Also, I'm not as soft and witless as your comment implies. Well, at the risk of questioning the towers of conventional cliché this movie is breaking down, I will ask the same question I asked in Van Helsing. <clears throat> when does she get kidnapped? Fight the good fight, Wonder Woman! They come across the original car that fell with Dr. Grant and Timmy in it. Guess they moved the giant wall but forgot the car? As they locate Blue but open fire too early. We leave, you son of a bitch! Cool, so a dart they just said could possibly kill a dinosaur just knocks out Chris Pratt, providing a comedically goofy moment when the volcano explodes and he has to outnumb his body to outslither the lava. While well, Chris Pratt pretending to be Mr. Bean playing the ground is literally lava is supposed to be funny. I believe being that close to actual lava would probably leave you looking like this throughout the rest of the movie. Oh, thank God these two are still okay. It's the T-Rex. It's the T-Rex. It's the T-Rex. Claire, it's the T-Rex. It's the T-Rex. It's the T-Rex. Stop! It's not the T-Rex. I bet. Are you sure there's no T-Rexes down here? 
Good thing instinctual dinosaurs are just as stupid about staying away from lava. We made it! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, go up, you dumbass. Go up. Go up. Christ, even Shaggy and Scoopy are making fun of what a coward you are. Bro, what a pussy. Holy Ah, uh, yes, this movie can kill tons of people, but it can say the S word. The cementing of the PG-13 genius continues. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that'll work. Oh. Okay. I thought that only worked with Coke machines and Dennis Rodman. Well, shows what I know. Get in! No, no, I have to stand still, slowly back away, and then just stare blankly at it rather than take a millisecond to step inside. They can't track you if you act really stupid. But the T-Rex makes her big entrance. Which we already saw, so it's not a big deal, but man, they try to make it one. You know she really is a drama queen? She's like the ultimate photo bomber. I can totally see a post on her Instagram being like, Oh my god, guys, I just happened to be roaring for no reason when a volcano totally erupted. What are the chances, right? Like and follow or I'll eat you. Bye! We then get, to the film's credit, the only good suspenseful scene where Claire and Franklin almost drown. But maybe I love it because Claire and Franklin almost drown. Pratt gets them out and they see the dinosaurs are being taken captive. Well, too bad it's such a long distance away and they couldn't possibly walk there. So they walk there in seconds and find the men are kidnapping the dinosaurs for their own terrible means. Oh, oh, yeah. We're just fucking it up and we'll tow it on! Let's go! Continue to be late 90s Disney villains and talk about how you're only interested in the money. I want that money in the bank by the time I get back. I want that bonus. We got the blue one. I want my bonus! Oh, and be sure to take an evil trophy to add to your evil collection, even though a freaking volcano is exploding and seconds count. You're gonna feel that when you wake up. This'll make a great necklace for my woman's suit. Our heroes goddamn jump from an island onto the boat while driving a truck, and nobody seems to notice. Oh, I see, it's because she wore a hat. That instantly disguises one of the most famous faces the world had ever known for a while. Isn't that the lady who owned the park we were just sent to pillage? But she's got a new hat. Oh, of course, yeah. Then why is nobody recognizing those two? They don't have mind-cloaking hats like she does. They were pretty high up in the mission's totem pole. Oh, excuse me, miss. We're in the middle of filming. I'm gonna need you to clear out. Critic, it's me. Tamara! Where did you come from? Did you see that random stranger wearing a hat? Critic, it's me. Witchcraft! The logic of Fallen Kingdom has not led me astray. Let me try something. Malcolm, when did you turn into a white woman? Okay, I need a shot of something. Witchcraft! In keeping with the film's flawlessly constructed tone, the dinosaurs that were trying to kill everybody and you were supposed to be afraid of were immediately supposed to feel sorry for now. Wow, it's like that incredibly smooth transition they had in the first film. Can I touch it? Sure. Just think of it as kind of a big cow. It's a roller coaster of emotion. That's not yet finished, but you're writing anyway. As you may have noticed, I'm a big fan of a lot of artwork. There's so many great artists and so many great styles, I love collecting them. I also like to draw a bit myself. But sadly, I've been out of practice for a while. Thankfully, there's a place where you can pretty much learn anything you need. And that place is Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 20,000 classes in design, photo, and more. Including, as you would probably guess, drawing. I used to be an illustrator, but so much time has gone past, I don't always know all the new technology. Thankfully, there's classes on there that can teach you practically anything you need. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Skillshare also believes in accessible learning, and the price reflects that. 
An annual subscription with unlimited access is less than $10 a month. $10 a month, making it one of the best deals you can find for online education. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months free to try it out. Risk free. It's been a long time since I can draw like any of that, but with Skillshare, I can get right back into it. There's plenty of classes with plenty of opportunities. So go to this link to check it out. The first 500 people to sign up will receive a two month free trial. Go to this link to start your trial today. It's never too late to learn something new. Lockwood's house, Maisie sees two men in suits talking business. Ooh, well this would entice any seven-year-old's attention. Gotta check this out. Our geneticists have created a direct descendant, the animal that took down Jurassic World. It follows human command. Ah, you're making another dinosaur based on the one you couldn't control before that destroyed an entire park. I see no problems here. Proceed. Maisie tries to let her grandfather know what's going on. They're going to sell the dinosaurs. They're bringing them here. I'm sure you misunderstood. I know what I heard, Grandpa. Maisie, it's way past your bedtime. You were just like this the first time you were this age. Our heroes find Zia and try to help her fix up Blue, who was injured. Franklin, take over for Claire. No, 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 no. Franklin. Oh my god, is that in my mouth? Did you get in my mouth? Oh, 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 oh. Ah! She says Blue needs a blood transplant, and the only one that'll work is, of course, from the T-Rex. Okay, I don't know much about dinosaurs, and judging by the fact she's never seen one, I don't think she does either, but is getting the blood from two very different animals the same? If a cat is injured, would blood from a lion work just as well? Chaplin, what do you think? Boom! The T-Rex, of course, wakes up. They don't realize they can just stay behind her to be safe. And they attempt a crazy escape to get the blood back. Meanwhile, back at Lockwood's, a, I guess, big surprise is made. Dr. Wu is helping them weaponize the dinosaurs. Blue's DNA will be part of the next Indoraptor's makeup. When did this guy go from just the person next to the dinosaur eggs to the world's biggest DNA splicing supervillain? I'll tell you exactly when this nod. That nod was up to something. I've got to warn Uncle Gadget! Of course they figure out that Maisie knows about their super illegal diabolical plan, so they... give her a timeout. Keep her in there, and keep the door locked. Now you think about how weaponizing endangered species can benefit you. Hey, look, they like each other again. Yeah, seeing how their chemistry made no sense and was out of nowhere in the last movie, I guess it makes sense to do it once more. But wait, this is a movie starring douchey hipsters. Painfully forced Trump joke! Take your own damn samples. What a nasty woman. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephen Colbert, SNL, and countless internet memes, you need to retire! Jurassic World has won the battle of political commentary! And here everybody thought Fahrenheit 11.9 would be the film to bring Trump down. Okay, nobody thought that, but nevertheless, Jurassic World has beaten you to the punch! Oh, thank you so much, writer of Monster Trucks! You have given us a voice. They get the dinosaurs to Lockwood's house, somehow not making any noise for Lockwood or his servants to hear. Hey, I guess if they made this dinosaur dungeon an auctioning house under his nose all this time, they must just have really quiet workers. And they get the dinosaurs in their cages. T-Rex doesn't want to be fat, he wants to hunt. Everybody who made this hates the first movie. But Lockwood finally finds out. Hey, I guess he does have a little bit of a brain. But, uh, not too much. Did you really think you could get away with it? Pick up that phone. I want you to call the police. Oh, hey, Malcolm. What are you up to? Oh, well, I've spent years and years building an aquarium to auction off weaponized killer whales. I've hired a lot of people to transport them, and the bidder should be amazing. No, no, Malcolm, this won't do at all. I need you to call the police and turn yourself in. <sighs> Well, I guess there's no other way around it. No, not at all. I'm sure once I let all my accomplices know, they'll gladly turn themselves in too. Well, I think that goes without saying. Thank you for setting me straight and bringing my life to a crashing halt. Absolutely, it's the least I could do. Wait, couldn't I kill you? <laughs> no. <laughs>
Ooh. I guess you're right. <laughs> okay, I'm placing the call right now. Spit spot. Hello, police? Yeah, I've got a whale of a tail for you. <laughs> yeah, that'll be funny in a minute. He's a good kid. So anyway, the bad guy doesn't call the cops and kills Lockwood. Meanwhile, Owen and Claire are found out and captured. Hello. You should have stayed on the island. Grab him by the pussy, man. Build a wall to keep him locked up. So, okay, they're locked up in the house. The auction for the dinosaurs is about to begin. Surely this must be the opening of the third act. Nope, we're only at the halfway point. Yeah, there's still a ton of this movie left. Christ, this film went in faster if you just killed them instead of explaining your plan like a James Bond villain. I saved these animals. You betrayed a dying man for money. Claire, I admire your idealism. I never, ever did. Shoot him now! Shoot him now! Maisie ironically uses the trick that the raptors use in the Jurassic Park parody from The Critic, proving this pretty much is a parody of a parody. And even then it seems pointless because she climbs out of a window a moment later. Well, why'd you just have her climb out of her bedroom window to save time? No wonder we still have an hour left. Stop writing pointless shit. Привет, Anton. Как дела? Хорошо. Надеюсь, все готово. By the way, there is a small child climbing up your building. You may want to get that looked at. So the auction begins as all the world's most darkly dressed supervillain leaders come to bid on the Flintstones garage sale. The Ankylosaurus is a herbivorous quadruped. This is one of the largest armored dinosaurs. The Ankylosaurus is wearing our late Cretaceous fall look, which seems to say to onlookers, I give pointed conversation. Sassy. Owen has an idea though for how to get out of their cell. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh shit, now we're screwed. That thing's gonna kill us, totally gonna kill us. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure there's yet another cartoon dumbbell scene that'll save everybody. <laughs> they come across Maisie and quickly earn each other's trust. My name is Claire, what's yours? Maisie, Maisie Lockwood. Maisie number two Lockwood. I always thought it was a weird middle name. Meanwhile, they bring out the leftover Rex and tell them it's not being bid on because it's only a prototype. Then why are you showing it? Are you trying to cement your place in the ever-growing dinosaur auction market? I feel like you got the seal on this for a while. 20 million! 41! They bid on it anyway, which once again is a pointless scene because Owen comes in to stop them. Again, you could have cut that and not miss shit. <laughs> There's clearly blame on both sides for this. Some of you are mighty fine people. Of course, dumbass goes into the cage of, I guess the best thing to call it is Coke 3 asaurus To what else? Get a tooth for his tooth collection. What follows is amazingly not the stupidest thing in the movie. She smiled at the camera. She goddamn smiled at the camera. It's official! We're in a Weird Al video! We are seconds away from this thing just straight up talking! <laughs> I'm gonna get him, kids! What has one arm and is you? You! <laughs> Made Jurassic World great again! Oh, but don't think on top of that you're not getting a wah wah moment too! We used to make real movies. We then get the dumbest, most pointless twist in all the film, and on top of that, it comes out of nowhere. The bad guys corner our heroes and, for no reason, just starts talking about this. You have no idea what she is. Lockwood never had a grandchild. He just wanted his daughter back. He made her again. Um... Yeah, that's pretty stupid. Right? What the flying hell? She's a clone? What's the point of that? It doesn't connect to anything. And despite being, I guess, a few clues, nobody could have guessed this because it doesn't tie in to any of the character's motivations. Why even tell him that? Just shoot them and take her. In fact, why tell Maisie that? What did he think was honestly going to happen after he let her know? That's right. She's a clone. Now, Maisie, come here. Good girl, good girl. Yeah, you were faced by that all, were you? Yeah, no, not at all. You want some ice cream? Want some ice cream? Yeah, I'll be nice. Yeah, yeah, you're a clone. Funny, right? Shoot them. 
Franklin saves Zia from the evil Dr. Wu. God, that still sounds weird. And the who gives a shit Soros tries to hunt down our heroes as the rest of the movie pretty much just turns into Yoshi's mansion. Boy, this weaponized killing machine is kind of a dumbass. She can't even find them when they're literally under her nose. And even when she does, she's so goddamn clumsy, you'd swear the scream killer gave her stalking lessons. Oh yeah, use your heightened sense of smell to completely miss that they were right in front of you. A door. Oh well, can't get beyond that. I guess she's the signs, aliens. Ah! Oh, even greater idea. Leave the two larger meals who are trapped behind and chase after the smaller morsel running away. Whoever won this thing is gonna have some serious buyer's remorse. Claire's leg is busted up bad, so she urges Owen to go and save Maisie. I can't leave you here. <laughs> Remember I dumped you. That epic choir music comes back, again, totally warranted for such a giant epic image like a raptor on the roof! My god, it's finally happening! And we see the kid who figured out this giant evil conspiracy, thwarted the bad guys at every turn, and even managed to outsmart a prehistoric predator, is now hiding under the covers for safety. It's one of the bugs of cloning. They can find ingenious escape routes along dangerous ledges. But think bed sheets are indestructible bomb shelters. <laughs> Honestly, it's almost as bad as our bug with cloning dinosaurs, where even when they find their prey, they just slowly wave their fingers in front of them rather than attack like every other instance. What I'm trying to say is science is stupid. But Owen comes in to shoot her, but it doesn't seem to work. So he, A, goes to protect the kid, B, runs out the door behind him, C, grabs the kid and takes her with him through the door behind him, or D, leans up against the wall like a seven-year-old who's dumb enough to hide under bed covers. <laughs> yeah, I'm convinced this whole thing is a big budget Johnny Karate episode. But Blue comes in to save the day, so now they can go out the door or the window. Yeah, that's, um, okay. Mommy. It's not as safe as the bed sheets, but it'll have to do. Claire somehow climbs the windows as well, despite having a busted leg a second ago, and distracts the soon-to-be-forgotten source long enough for Owen's true love to take her down. What's the matter? Feeling blue? Oh, you just got blue no! But it looks like a toxic gas is going to kill off what's left of the dinosaurs unless they free them with that giant red cartoony button. Wow, the designers really took opening a door very seriously. But they decide not to, as in one of the few adult moments of the movie, they realize their love for animals is not worth the countless loss of human life, the mixing of two worlds. Psych, the world is doomed. I had to. So, just close the door. Oh, you only have a big red button to open the door, not a big red button to close the door. If only there was a big red button for the big red button. Who designed this? And what's her dumbass reason for dooming mankind? They're alive, like me. They're uh, about to kill a lot of little kids like you too. Dumbass? So it's Dino Spring Break as they're all set loose and the bad guy gets his comeuppance from what used to be the coolest character in the movies but now it just feels like Porky Pig ending a Looney Tune short. And it looks like Blue has to part ways too. Tell that crazy kid thanks! Whenever I eat a buffet of Girl Scouts, I'll always think of her. So yeah, this movie ends with dinosaurs getting ready to eat up mankind. Would have kind of been cool if this was the movie. It's almost as confusing as where the hell did this one come from? Was she captured in a sea tank that also opened up with the door? Or did she literally swim all the freaking way to a California beach? And what's even more confusing is apparently we're supposed to have sympathy for our adorable angel of death. But all I can think about is Malcolm McDowell describing Michael Myers. These are the eyes. Of a psychopath. But in the end, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom pulls it all together because of this incredibly spelled out lesson. They're alive. Like me. Which goes against this incredibly spelled out lesson. These creatures were here before us, and if we're not careful, they're gonna be here after. Ew, 
which doesn't really match up with this incredibly spelled out lesson. These creatures don't need our protection. They need our absence. But at least we can all agree. But soon they're gonna have to watch them go extinct. Or not. If people like you make a difference. It's like when we have a lot of messages that say opposite things were incredibly complex. Or really transparent, we couldn't decide on what message we wanted. This movie's awful! I'll give credit that the effects are pretty good, much better than some of the previous ones. I'll also give credit that it is kind of a so bad it's good kind of flick. I mean, they just constantly throw stupid shit after stupid shit at you. It's relentless in the amount of dumbest bits in your face. But that's not what people wanted. They wanted a real Jurassic Park film. One that's fun, but also made some semblance of sense and gave us something new and different. Instead, we pretty much got the worst of all the other Jurassic Park movies. All the weaknesses, none of the strengths, everything that didn't work in those past films is showcased in this one. It's stupid, it's corny, it's pretentious, and it's preachy. Even though half of the time it doesn't know what it's preachy about. I don't care if it made money, to me, this is a Jurassic flop. Now with the next Jurassic Park sequel, Everything is correctable. John, box office is a matter of sheer will. Well, it's still a flea circus. It's all an illusion. When we have a better script. You never had a script! That's the illusion! We were overwhelmed by the first film, but now all that matters is not having another alien covenant. Mm. Welcome to Jurassic Covenant. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Oh, my God. <sighs> I'm the nostalgia critic and I'll see you at Jurassic World, The Legend of Curly's Gold. Look at you now, you're saving the world. <laughs>